Hello, family. Welcome to Cathedral. We're so glad to have you. My name is Anthony Taylor, and this is my wife, Lily Taylor. Um, and we are Chi Alpha missionaries over at the campus of Lamar University. Listen, if you are tuning in with us from online, we want to invite you to go ahead, share this video on yes, your page, it, get that it. watch party started, like as much as you want, and comment. We want to interact with you this morning, just yeah. like we would if we were meeting in this building. So, hey, we're about to transition into a time of worship. So lift your hands, kneel, sing out loud, whatever you need to do, but be expectant that the living God will meet you wherever you are. Good morning, Cathedral. We're so glad you're worshiping with us online. We just want to invite you to take a few minutes this morning, stand to your feet if you want to in your house, clap your hands, sing out, and just have a good time with us this morning.
Tried so hard to see in. Took me so long to believe in. Did you choose someone like me to carry your victory? Perfection could never earn it. And you give what we don't deserve it. You take the broken. Raise them to glory. Cause you are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated oh, in the hell. Striving cease. This is my victory. Now I can finally see it. You're teaching me how to receive it. So let all the striving cease. Oh, this is my victory. Oh, cause you are my
Morning Cathedral, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Pastor Seth Perry. I'm one of the associate ministers here at Cathedral, and we are so glad that you've taken the time out of your day to join us from wherever you are, whether it be your home, your office, or in the car driving to work. That was a powerful time of worship we just had, and our prayer here at Cathedral is that the presence of Almighty God would rest in your homes and that Holy Spirit would continue to minister to you and your family throughout the day. Well, this is when we receive the tithe and the offering. And I wanted to bring you an encouraging word out of 1 Peter chapter 5, starting at verse 8. In the message translation, he says, Keep a cool head. Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. You're not the only ones plunged into these hard times. It's the same with Christians all over the world. So keep a firm grip on the faith. The suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ. They're eternal and glorious plans. He will have you put back together and on your feet for good. He gets the last word. Yes, he does. Amen. So in these times of uncertainty where most of us don't know where our next paycheck may be coming from, some of us have already filed for unemployment, some of us going and checking our, our bank accounts to see if that stimulus check has deposited yet. But I wanna encourage you like the Hebrews of old to take that first 10, that first tenth, and set it aside and dedicate it to God out of a heart of gratitude and recognition of where our provision comes from. Here at Cathedral, we have three ways that you can give this morning. You can put a check in the mail and send it to 2350 East Tex Freeway. You can log in at icathedral.org slash give. And then our newest system is our text to give. You can text whatever the dollar amount may be that you're wanting to contribute to 409 202 6228. While you're getting your tithe ready this morning, I want to pray a special blessing over you. Father, I thank you for our cathedral family. I thank you that wherever they may be and whatever the situation may be this morning, Father, you have the provision for their needs. So, Father, in these difficult times, in these times of uncertainty, we thank you that you never change, you stay the same. Father, I ask for a special blessing to be on their homes, to give them more than enough so that they can provide for others around them and be a true testimony of your faithfulness on the earth in these times. And all God's people said, amen. Stay tuned, Pastor Felshaw is coming with a great word for you this morning. Good morning, Cathedral. And once again, it's really good to be with you. Although I can't see your faces, I do feel your love and your prayers. I know that we're anxious to get back to work and to awaken our community, but let me encourage you to be patient and to pray for your leaders, from the president to the governor to the county judge to the city mayor, for our leaders are trying to find a wise, safe, and healthy way to reopen the nation. So please be pray patient and please continue to pray. Now, I know that our nerves are starting to fray around the edges. And for that reason, next Sunday, we're going to speak to mental monsters that we're all dealing with. So I want you to make plans to join me next Sunday and be in prayer with me that God would speak to our community and help people with depression and chemical dependency because people are going to external stimulations in order to cope with this challenging time. Now, for today, I do have a message that I believe is going to speak to you. It's going to speak to our community. I believe it's a word for our nation. And I'll end my message with a dream that I had last week that addresses the COVID-19 crisis that we're in right now. So please stay with me. And in fact, call somebody and say, tune in to iCathedral.org Pastor Felsher has a word today, and he has a dream that he's going to share. So God bless you. Thank you for being with me today. Let's go in to today's message. 
This is Jonathan Kahn. We are standing at a critical moment in American and world history, a moment that can seal the future for calamity or redemption. We've driven God out of our culture and we war against his ways. If we don't return to God, America's light will go out. The answer is revival, but we only have a limited window of time. So this is the announcing of the return, the national and global day of prayer and repentance, Saturday, September 26, 2020, 40 days from the election and on the 400th anniversary of the sailing of the Mayflower at America's dedication to God. Join me for a pivotal, sacred and prophetic gathering on the National Mall, Washington, D.C. If you can't make it there, the return will be all over America. Gather in your states, your churches, your homes to pray for repentance, return, revival and restoration on the promise, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, I will hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. The return is for all of God's people, every denomination. And on board is everybody from Pat Robertson to Dr. Dobson, from Billy Graham's daughter, Anne Graham Lotz, to Martin Luther King's niece, Alveda King, and many, many more. Surrounding the day of the return will be the 10 ancient days of prayer and repentance, beginning with the Feast of Trumpets to Yom Kippur, September 18th to September 28th to intensify our prayers and intercession for revival. And if you're outside America, join us on that day in your nation to pray not only for America, but for your nation and bring the return to your land. The return, September 26, 2020. Plan for it now. Spread the word in this video and go to the returnwebsite.org. That's the returnwebsite.org. The return begins now as you, me, and all of God's people not only pray for revival, but begin living in revival. It is time to seek the Lord. It's time to return. As a community, we've been through storms before, from hurricanes to floods to violence in our streets, but we've never faced anything like the coronavirus COVID-19. And this virus does demand a response. The government is responding with executive orders. Uh, citizens are responding with social distancing. And the medical field is responding with treatment and with research. But this multi-pronged approach to combating the COVID-19 must also include a deeper spiritual response. John Wesley said, God does nothing but an answer to prayer. In Amos chapter 3, verse 7, we read, Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. You see, God's revelation, the revealing of what he's doing, is an invitation for you and I as the church to join him in that plan. And I assure you, in this season, God is awaiting our response in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 11 uh, through 16, we find a similar story. Now, I understand this is a present application to the nation of Israel, but there's a practical application for you and I, the church. We read here in verse 11, When Solomon had finished the temple of the Lord and the royal palace, God's house and his house, and had succeeded in carrying out all that he had in mind, he had something in mind to do for God's house and for his house. The Lord appeared to him and he said, I have heard your prayer and I've chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. When I shut up the heavens, you can't see my face or you can't sense my presence or it feels like your prayers are not being heard. When I shut up the heavens, so that there is no rain, or I command the locusts to devour the land, or your finances are in crisis, or I send a plague or a pandemic among the people. If you will respond the right way, if my people will respond, the people that are called by my name, my family, if they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn their back on their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen 
and consecrated this temple so that my name will be there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. His eyes and his heart is attentive to you and I, and he awaits our response. Let's title this, Restoring the Land to Health. Let me speak to you for just a moment about this, what's in your mind. Solomon had something in his mind about the house of God and his own personal house. Verse 11 and 12, in his mind. Something in his mind. So I want you to see that a crisis actually presents an opportunity uh, for change. A crisis, you see, will push you, push you outside of your comfort zone. A crisis will disrupt your natural order of living. A crisis will turn things upside down. You see, typically, if we're going to change, it requires self-motivation. But crisis removes that self-motivating requirement for change, and it pushes us outside our comfort zone. Crisis will force you to change. Hurricanes and floods force us to change. We have to change things. It forces you to. So today's question is this. Like Solomon, what is in your mind? Not on your mind. And I say that deliberately. Not what is in your mind. Oh, excuse me. It's not what's on your mind, but what's in your mind concerning church, the house of God, and your own personal family. What is in your mind speaking to you? Crisis will speak to you. Crisis will force you to change. 1 Corinthians 2. But we have the mind of Christ. I believe that the mind of Christ is in us now, speaking to us as individuals, as a church, a community, and as a nation. So like Solomon, what are you thinking concerning the house of God in your own personal house? What are you thinking right now? What is Holy Spirit speaking to you? Changes that you need to make, adjustments and alterations. We know that COVID-19 is a crisis, and we know that COVID-19 is going to push us outside of our comfort zone. It's going to force us to rethink church, rethink business, rethink school, rethink family. Now, we'll go back to some things that are familiar, but I believe it's going to change us in many ways. So we must understand that after a crisis of this magnitude, there is no going back to life as usual. Crisis removes that option of going back. And therein lies the opportunity. Right now, church, listen to me. We're at a transition. You see, there is power in crisis. It's called the tipping point of transformation. Crisis will tip you into transformation. And it will free you from that which is familiar and push you into personal growth. Solomon had something in mind for the house of God, change. He had something in mind for uh, his own house, change. And I'm asking you right now, what's on your mind in all this downtime of staying, uh, the stay-at-home order? What, what, what is Holy Spirit speaking to you about personal growth, alterations, and change? As a pastor, he's not only speaking to me about, the, about being the priest of my home, but he's speaking to me about being the priest of this house and the changes that we need to make in order to move forward. You see, within crisis lies the opportunity for change. Right now, as a nation, as a community, as a church, as a family, as an individual, we have in this crisis a great opportunity to change. So what is in your mind? What's in your mind speaking to you right now? The second thing that I want to extract from this story is the three critical conditions that we find with Israel that is applicable to you and I. Second Chronicles 7, 13, he listed them. Number one, the shutting of the heavens. Number two, the, the locusts devouring their land. And number three, the plague or the pandemic among the people. 
This first condition, I will call it when the heavens become like brass. I use that because Deuteronomy 28 and verse 23 reads, And thy heaven, speaking to Israel, that's over your head, shall be like brass. He was telling Israel that if you do what's right, things will go well with you. But if you do what's rebellious and and disobedience, the heavens above you will become like brass. Now, that's referring to the natural order of things, the, the rain that falls. But I believe there's a spiritual application there also. During this time, I have experienced it, and I know others have too. I, I've asked the question, where is God in the midst of all this? There have been times that I, I've struggled with sensing his presence. There have been times that I, I've wondered, is my prayers getting above the ceiling? There have been times that I've sensed the people and the nation is asking the question, where is God? I can't see his face. Now, the Jews call this Hester Panaim. Hester Panaim in the Hebrew, it means hiding face. It means we can't see, hear, understand the wisdom of God and what he's doing in this present situation. Hester Panaim, hiding face. Now, there are two reasons for hiding face. Number one, God hides his face to awaken our awareness for our need to seek after him. We become indifferent, we become cold, and God wants to stir up that passion within us so he'll hide his face from us so that we will begin to seek after him again. The second reason is because he wants to awaken within us our awareness of personal or national sin. As with Joshua, the conquest of Canaan, as he was trying to take the city Ai, and he lost the battle. He asked God, what's wrong? And God said, there's sin in the camp. And he found the sin in the tent of Achan. Two reasons why God will hide his face, to cause his people to hunger for him again, and to cause his people to begin to ask the question, God, what's wrong? Is there sin in the camp? So during this time, if you, during this pandemic, if you are asking the same question, where's God's face? I, I can't sense his presence. What, what's God doing right now? You're what, we're call, what we call suffering and silence when the heavens aren't speaking. Suffering and silence is the most challenging trial of all. But it is the greatest opportunity for correction and for personal growth. Isaiah 45, 15 reads, truly you are a God who hides himself. And right now, God is using this moment to cause you and I to once again seek after him and to cause the nation to face its idolatry and its immorality. You see, the fact is, our Heavenly Father, in regards to his children, he loves to play the game Hide and seek. And God wants us to seek after him. The second condition that we find here in the story of Israel that I know is applicable to you and I is this condition of the loss of personal income. He said, look, if you guys turn away from me, the heavens are going to become brass and the locusts are going to devour your crops, your supply, or your finances. The Texas Workforce Commission put out this report concerning the COVID-19 unemployment claims filed. The week ending of February the 22nd, and that one week, there was over 7,000 uh, unemployment claims. But for just a week ago, the end of April the 11th in one week, there was over 273,000 claims. So we went from February the 22nd, 7,000 claims to April the 11th, 273,000 claims. Surely there's a financial crisis in this nation. The Washington Post said this, the U.S. labor market is tumbling closer to depression levels with an additional 5.2 million people filing for unemployment benefits last week, one week only. A staggering 22 million Americans have filed jobless claims over the past month. Staggering numbers. 
a financial crisis. The locusts are devouring the land. But what is a Christian to do in the midst of this pandemic and this financial crisis? 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is a root, a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith and their greediness, and they have pierced themselves through many sorrows. I want you to know that in the midst of this crisis, there really is a benefit to financial problems. The first one is this. It gives us, it affords us the opportunity, as Paul said, to dig out that root of greed, to dig it out and to change our hearts and the way we look at money. The second benefit is it causes us to get our faith back on course. We get caught up in pleasures and possessions and the things of this world, the love of this world, and it chokes out the love of the Father. And this crisis gives us an opportunity to get our faith back on course. And then number three, it causes us to restore what true joy is. Not seeking the happiness of this world that's only momentary, but to get back to true joy. Because Paul said, when you get caught up in this love of money, it will cause you to pierce yourself with sorrow. Seeking after gold and the acquiring of gold only increases your desire for more gold. There's no end to it. It's the lust of the eyes. And it's, there's no end to it. Filled with sorrow. Never being able to slate your thirst for the things of this world. But in this crisis we're in, we can get back to what real joy is. True satisfaction. Understanding that only our relationship with God through Christ can truly satisfy us. You see, a financial crisis is an opportunity to experience God as Jehovah Jireh. So the first condition, the heavens become brass, that gives us an opportunity to play hide and seek with our Heavenly Father. The second condition, financial loss, affords us the opportunity to experience Him once again as Jehovah Jireh. God is my source, not the stock market, not the government, but God is my source. And then the third condition here with Israel and with you and I is the pandemic. The coronavirus, COVID-19, as of April the 12th, 2020, the global report, there's over 2 million cases being reported, over 145,000 deaths being reported, over 550,000 recovery, uh, recovery cases. Psalms chapter 9 and verse 17 reads, The wicked go down to the realm of the dead, all the nations that forget God. You see, what's happened to us is the COVID-19 has caused us to come up to the very realm or the edge of death. And we look into the face of death all around the world. And the emergency rooms and the ICU units and the bodies that are being buried in mass graves. Did we ever believe we'd see mass burials in America? So we're looking into the very face of death the nations that forget God. So you see, this is, this is God. Perhaps he's taken this opportunity to get our attention, to get our attention. The nations are starting to remember God again. We see this with national leaders requesting prayer, with healthcare professionals praying before they go on their shift with liberal media outlets even acknowledging God and requesting prayer. And Vice President Pence, he made the statement, let's spend less time on the internet and more time on our knees praying. This is the day, as we mentioned last Sunday, this is the day when the world has gone silent. Our streets are empty. We're locked down as communities. We've been forced to be still and perhaps to know that he is God. And in this silence, when we are, have shut down the economy and the pursuit of fame and fortune, perhaps in this moment, we're still enough and we're quiet enough that we can hear the whisper of God. And perhaps God is asking the question, can you hear me now? 
three conditions, three conditions that we find here in our story. The heavens become brass. We're seeking after God. The locust is devouring our land, and we're learning God as Jehovah Jireh. And then the pandemic, the plague that gripped the nation. And this is an opportunity for us to hear the voice of God. But the question still is, what is our response to this pandemic? Second Chronicles 7.14 in the Message Bible reads, And my people, my God-defined people, they respond. It wasn't, it wasn't a, it's more of a statement here. It's, they, they're going to respond. He, he's speaking to us in a positive way. They're, they're going to respond by humbling themselves, praying, seeking my presence, and turning their backs on wickedness. And when they do, I'm ready. God said, I'm ready. I'm ready for them. I'm ready. I'm, I'm eager. I, I will listen from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I, I will restore their land to health. So you see, there has to be a spiritual response to a natural disaster. The first one is identificational repentance and a seeking after God to restore his divine favor on our land, to repent for our nation of its idolatry and its immorality. You say, but pastor, I haven't done anything. It doesn't matter. The people of God that are called by his name, that bear his name, his family, his children, they have to step up to the plate and take responsibility and repent for the idolatry and the immorality of the nation. To say to him, forgive us, for seeking gold when we should have been seeking your face. Forgive us for over 50 million abortions. Forgive us for our idolatry, for our immorality. We have to repent for the nation. And the second response, the spiritual response to this disaster is a turning our back. He said, if they will pray, if they'll humble themselves, Humble yourself. Swallow your pride. I didn't, I didn't do anything. That's okay. Swallow your pride and repent for the nation. If we will do that and then turn our backs on wickedness, if we'll turn our backs on personal wickedness and national wickedness, immorality, he said, I am ready and I'm willing to heal your land. God said, I'm there. I'm ready to forgive I'm ready to restore health to the land. God is more eager to heal us than we are to be healed. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation. Godly sorrow leads to repentance. The word sorrow there means sadness, grief, a heaviness. The word repentance means to abhor sin, to change your mind about it, and to do an about face, to reverse yourself and the direction you're going in, to turn your back, as we read here in and, and, Second and Chronicles 7.14, to turn your back upon wickedness. You see, repentance is more than just saying, I'm sorry. Repentance is a grieving over our national condition in this sorrow that would grip the church could lead us out of this present crisis. As I, I just I want to remind you that there is a power in crisis. This crisis we're in, it can be a tipping point for transformation. This pandemic can tip the nation into, into a national transformation. It can cause a revival to break out in the churches. It can cause a spiritual awakening in our streets that brings about a great harvest of souls. It can be a tipping point. It can free us from that which is familiar and push us into new personal growth. It can break off of us that lethargic spirit. It can break off of us that, that apathy and cause us to engage and, and to get serious about the house of God in our own personal house. As Solomon, he had something in his mind about the house of God in his personal house and, and, and he, he started to make change. And This can cause you and I to be pushed 
to push us into change. Within crisis lies the opportunity for change. But it has to begin with you and me, individually. And then the church, and then the community, and then the nation. So, I ask you the question, what should you turn your back on? He said, if you'll humble yourself and repent, be sorry for what's gripped this nation. He said, if you'll turn your back on idolatry and immorality, he said, I am ready and willing to heal the land and to restore health to it. So I ask you the question, what do you, what do I need to turn our backs upon? God's revelation What he's trying to do in a nation is his invitation. He's inviting us to join him in his plan. And today, I promise you, he awaits our response. In closing, I'd like to leave with you three takeaways, three words that I'd like for you to remember and to pray about this coming week. Number one, the opportunity of crisis change. Number two, how we handle the crisis, seeking. And then number three, the turning of our backs upon the idolatry and the immorality in our nation and the turning of our faces towards him, repentance, change, seeking, and repentance. Now, I'm not a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but this last week I had a dream addressing the coronavirus, COVID-19. And in my dream, I was standing on a shoreline looking out across the sea, and I could see as a ship was approaching. Now, this was one of the old sailing ships, and it, was, it looked like a ghost ship to me. I instinctively knew that on this ship was the virus. And the closer it got, the more it faded until eventually it faded out, revealing behind it a second ship. Now, in that moment, I turned to those behind me and I said, we must prepare for the second wave. Now, I believe that this dream doesn't have to be a warning of what shall be, but it can be a warning of what could be, depending upon the response of God's people. In our text, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, God said, if my people will, if we will respond correctly, So, here's the question. As a nation, are we willing to turn our back on idolatry and immorality and turn our face towards him and thus turn the second ship around and away from the shores of this great nation? In this, we see the power and the possibility of a simple response, if my people will. So I ask you, how will you respond? How will I respond? How will this nation respond? Today's message, restoring health to our land. God bless you. Hey, family, wasn't that a powerful word from our pastor, Pastor Felshaw? Hey, if you've never given your life to Jesus or if you want to rededicate your life to Jesus right now, we want to give you that opportunity to do so. So take some time. Let's pray a prayer right now. Father God, God, I repent. I repent. Forgive me of all of my sins. Forgive me of all of my sins. I confess with my mouth mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe that you raised him from the dead. Thank you for saving me and accepting me into your family. Thank you for saving me and accepting me into your family. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Listen, if you just prayed that prayer for the first time, we want to say welcome to the family yes, of the kingdom welcome. of God. We are so, so excited for you, and we want to celebrate with you. So if you just prayed that prayer, please text the word found to the number 99,000 so that we can A, celebrate with you and also get you plugged in with our church. Yeah. We have this incredible thing happening called City Groups. Ooh. Shout out hey. to Regina and Dante Miller. They are our city group yes, leaders. Yeah. We got to meet with them this past Wednesday, and it was such an encouraging time when we're all scattered of getting to come together, see faces that we haven't gotten to see in such a long time. And I just was so, so grateful for that time. So yeah. we want you to have that experience as well. We want to get you connected. So also, if you haven't texted City Group yet, now's your chance. Text City Group to the number 99,000, and we will get you plugged in. Just a reminder, go ahead and share this on your page, like, comment. You have an incredible area of influence around you that needs to hear the word of yeah, God that was yeah, shared this on. morning. Yeah. So go ahead and share that, and we will see you soon as we return this next week. Bye, Bye, -bye guys.